about their ball club, and, and we've been steady all year long. They're 24 and 2 for the year. Those two losses, the two hard fought losses to Galesburg. You know, and you, and, and you come in with a record, uh, UT 16 and 9, and Moline 24 and 2. You mentioned their two losses to Galesburg, but three of uh, UT's losses have been two to Moline, two to Galesburg, two to Quincy. So That's you right. take six losses off there, and their record all of a sudden is 22 and 3. No, they're not, they're, you know, and that's, that, they've been close ball games, both uh, other than the blowout to Quincy here, UT has been in every one of those games with an opportunity to win it, so, you know, you talk about matchups, I guess you talk about uh, the Wilson and uh, uh, maybe the Warden matchup uh, for uh, Moline and for UT, they both kind of neutralized each other in the first two ball games, Travis Wilson has had 21 and 17 points, and uh, Warden has had 19 and 18 points, so they've matched up pretty good along the way. I think when you and I did the Galesburg Moline game, there's going to be some unsung heroes in a game like right, this. Right. You know, the, generally, the primetime players neutralize each other, and somebody's going to come to the front. And tonight will be exciting to see not only which team does that, but which individual does that. Well, you know, and I think the Panthers have to contend not only with Travis Wilson; they know what he can do. But I think the X factor is how do we, how do the Panthers uh, deal with Ian Hanavan at six foot six, almost six foot six? Didn't score much the last time over at Warren Fieldhouse, but he had five steals in right. the game, well, which, uh, which account for a lot of points that you don't that you don't see in the box score. Well, the other statistic, and we're going to have Tim Sanders going to help us a little bit with some rebounding stats. I think will be very important because, as you mentioned, Hanneman has not scored well in the two games against the Panthers. But I tell you what, he's had 12 rebounds in one game and 18 rebounds in the other ball game, so right. that's going to going to hang in there. D. Hunter, I think, is another name that comes to mind for the Panthers. Right. He's, he's helped with 10 points and 11 points in the two contests so far, so it should be an exciting ball game. As the buzzer goes off, we're getting about ready to play, Coach. Well, we do, you, we do have those intangibles, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, again, we, we haven't mentioned this, and the fans probably know, but the Panthers uh, only have one senior on their old on their whole squad, so it's a it's a fairly young squad. However, at this stage of the game, uh, 25 games into the season, they're no longer juniors. They're seasoned veterans, and uh, Curtis Brewster come up from the sophomores has done a nice job here in the tournament so far. So exactly, we'll wait exactly. And see what, what kind of role he might play. Well, and you're, and I think the key, the key, as you mentioned now, they're all experienced players. UT, obviously, these kids, all, except for Cunningham, are going to have another season. But, uh, but the key, the key is, I think, going to be, as you mentioned, both teams are very experienced right now. UT is going to be the visitors uh, tonight, and uh, Moline will be the home team. So let's uh, go with the starting lineups, Coach. Well, here we go for the Panthers now. The starting lineup uh, has been kind of a set lineup towards the end of the season. First at guard, a five foot seven inch junior, number 12, Elijah Alonzo. At the other guard, a six foot two inch junior, number 15, D. Hunter. A six foot two inch junior. Number 23, Tyson Warden, leading scorer and second leading rebounder for the Panthers. Another junior for the Panthers, six foot two inch, Josh Evans, here we're number 33. Big man in the middle. Finally, number 50, Matt Cunningham, the sole senior on the team, another six foot two inch player. Six foot three is the heavy list for that, but uh, we don't know if he's six foot three or six foot two. <laughs> and now a starting lineup for the Moline Maroons. Big crowd here for Moline. At guard, number five, five ten junior, Ryan Dexter. Key factor in several ball games for Moline this year. At the other guard, six four senior, number thirty, Kenny Springer. Six one junior number thirty two Joe Kettner gets a start for the Maroons tonight. Number forty four six three senior Travis Wilson, and at center number fifty six five senior Ian Hanavan. Frank Dexter is the head coach for the Moline Maroons. 
officials for tonight are Randy Leitner, Gene Rayford, and Ronnie Jones. A good crew, and we might mention to our fans that we're going to go three-man crew throughout the entire tournament. So at this point in time, let's take uh, 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 time to salute our country, and we will uh, have our national anthem. the national anthem coach all said and done now now we just go play basketball yeah. you know and i think uh, the panthers are going to look for a little prettier defense out of the maroons tonight uh, some full court press i was lucky enough to be in the locker room before the game and heard the, the panther coaches talking a little bit i was a mouse in the corner i wasn't part of the conversation <laughs> but we'll look for that uh, they were talking about their inbounds plays and what they had to have ready and make sure all the kids knew what was going on well, our fans have been watching a lot of basketball this year. Obviously, Marcus Morrow, a starter for two years from Orleans, not in the starting lineup tonight. He's back with the team after a, a short layoff, and uh, how much he plays, if he plays, we'll see soon. Uh, the start goes to Joe Kettner, 6'1 junior, and we'll see how that plays out. Hanovan and uh, Warden will do the jumping at center as uh, Ronnie Jones will toss the ball. Let's play basketball. It's a sexual controlled by the Maroons. Kettner with the ball, gets the ball to Dexter out front. And we could see a variety of defenses from the Panthers tonight with the, they'll play zone, they'll play that tough man to man. Kettner inside, no place to go. Gets a pass out of there, Dexter's wide open. Feeds it down inside, Travis Wilson shot partially blocked. Panther ball, out of bounds with the Panthers. Kettner passed up a couple shots there to get the ball inside. Dexter passed up a shot to get the ball into Travis. Well, one position looks like Maroons maybe want to work that ball down on the blocks and see if Travis can do some damage in there. One, two, two zone by the Maroons. Played yeah, a lot of that done. last year. They went a long ways with that one, two, two zone last year. Nice pass down inside. Good nice hands by uh, Kettner, Kettner in there. Kettner did a nice job. Wilson ahead to Ryan Dexter and the Maroons will set up against man-to-man -man pressure. Wilson, nice move inside, spin move to the left. Scores the first two points of the ball game. Well, he's a handful on the block, so he's gonna have, whoever ends up guarding him is gonna have their hands full. Well, and they're there. gonna have to double down. Looked like they're trying to get there, but it was just so quick, it didn't happen. Panthers are gonna move the ball around the perimeter, try to find that soft spot in the zone, I'm sure, and then kick it back outside. Evans turns, fired, gets up and he scores. Full court oh, pressure. Oh, it too. Panthers pressure man to man. Full court. Dexter brings it across. Kettner. Hunter's trying to guard him inside. Not a chance inside right now against Travis Wilson. Goes, they double team him in a hurry, and he still got off a beautiful well, shot. Well, he's a quick jumper, and he goes straight up. He's not jumping into anybody. Nope. nope. Plus, he's as tall as these Moline's tallest kids. So. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, you, you talk about the Panthers. They'll go about eight or nine deep. There's where the hole yeah, is in, in that zone. That's plan. exactly right. Well, it's obvious that the Panthers have prepared for that zone. No, it's thus obvious. Thus far. Yep. Kettner with the ball. Springer at the top of the circle. 
Inside, Kettner, nice move inside. Going to be a foul. Count the basket. As Kettner took the ball to the glass on a beautiful shot. Looks like it's going to go on. Uh, basket's going to count. That could be the first foul of the game, and that's going to go on Josh Evans. Well, nice move. It's obvious that they're going. Moline wants to go to the low block against the Panthers and try to isolate down low, and right now they're dominating down there, and they haven't got the ball to Hanneman yet. Kettner finishes the three-point play, makes our score seven to four. Well, of the, of the four shots that Moline has taken, uh, they've all been point blank. That's right. That's exactly right. Tyson Warden from the arc. Count it! Boy, that's what he can do. Several ways to break that, that pressure. The ball gets inside to Hanneman. Hunter hustles. Beautiful hustle out of bounds. Good effort by D. Hunter there trying to save that ball. The Panthers don't leave anything in the locker room when no. they play. I'll tell you, I watched Scott Olson's team play out, out at Oregon when I used to officiate his games and all the time he's been there at UT. And his kids will give you the best effort consistently, game in and game out, as any coach I've ever seen. Hand check, going to be a foul. I'll tell you, that's hard for D in there because they're so strong that it, you just can't really keep that guy from coming into you. And that's D. Hunter picking up that hand check foul. But that's, like you said, that's hard not to get that foul. Yeah, you sure you're just getting, letting him go by you. Right. And well, the way the game is played nowadays, that's, that's status quo. Five second count almost. Dexter might have traveled, got away with it. Hanavan from about 15 feet away and count that one. Ian Hanavan for two. Nobody's missing here now, Coach. Nine sevens our score. 5.23 to go here, first quarter. Lonzo out front, key in the offense, kick it down to Cunningham. Hunter has an idea. Lonzo from the arc, he can hit him. Count it. Elijah Alonzo, three. Panthers with the one-point lead now. Oh, those two threes don't hurt anything, do they? No. Beautiful job. Going to call an offensive foul against Springer, looks like. Are they using the forearm in there? Yep. Well, that'll be Moline's first team foul. Springer picks up the first. Now Panthers lead, 10-9. Five minutes to go in the first quarter. Very exciting, very well played first quarter you here. Know, for as, for as uh, big a game as this can be, uh, yep. that's pretty well played game so far. Oh. Got a reach in foul. That could be on Springer. If that is, that's two real quick ones. That's uh, Kenny Springer. Well, you talked earlier. You know, we were, I was going to bring it up in the pregame, and I, I, I apologize for not. Marcus Morrow going to make a quick look into the lineup here. We talked about the Panthers being able to go about nine deep with their personnel, and Moline maybe going six or seven. Of course, Kettner being in there really helps now because uh, Morrow gets to come in and experience. But I was going to say, unless Moline gets in foul trouble, nine against six or seven, they played that all year long. So it's right. not going to affect Moline unless they get in unless foul they trouble. Get in foul trouble. Which Springer is in foul trouble right now. Oh, yeah, but, uh, you know, only three minutes and f 10 seconds into the game. Oh, nice inbounds oh, play. Blocked. Partially blocked. Out of bounds. It's going to go to the Maroons. Yep. Nice out of bounds play there. I think Hanneman blocked Evans' shot. I'm going to say Evans had a, had a pretty good look. Right. He was free in the lane momentarily. Well, Travis Wilson is going to bring that ball across the 10 second line. The Maroons will set up against man to man. Tough man to man pressure. Dexter penetrates. Kettner. And a call. Hanneman shuffled those feet ever so slightly. But with three officials, boy, they're going to catch all that stuff. Well, you'd think they would, but I've watched enough Big Ten games and, and, and other ball games this year where they missed some pretty, what looked like pretty obvious how about, things. How about they'll have the opportunity to call all <laughs> there those you go. they like. Whether there, they do or there not, there should be at least thing. one official watching everything that takes place <laughs> out there. I like this crew. They're, they're young. Uh, they've done a nice job. They earned the right, obviously, to be in this game. And I, I think we got very good officials, all from the Peoria and or Bloomington area. Well, the Panthers are going to pick up full court now and put a little, pre little token pressure, but uh, trying to keep the ball out of Dexter's hands, so they let Wilson bring it up. Got a switch in defense. Two hunters moved over to play Morrow now, and Evans is going to pick up Travis Wilson, see if a little, maybe a little stronger player. Who, who knows? Down on the blocks. Huh? Right. Kettner penetrates. Oh, he got fouled. And then Hunter's going to pick up his second that's, foul. I yeah, think. I was going to say, that's uh, going to be two on D. Hunter now, three on the Panthers. Got Jonathan Borden ready to check in for the Panthers, and he's going to come in and he's going to come in and get Evans. And here comes the sophomore Curtis Brewster is going to check into the ball game, as well as Courtney Hughes. Hunter's going to go to the bench. Hughes is going to yep. come in, and he's going to get uh, Matt Cunningham. So 
Fresh legs for the Panthers on right. the floor now. Well, that's going to that may pay off. I think Coach has done this the whole year. And uh, Brewster coming up the end of the season here and helping out is giving him one extra man. And, of course, Jonathan Gordon coming back off, off the uh, injured list has helped uh, right. give him that depth because he was a starter early and then now he's kind of playing himself back into shape but give the Panthers some real depth on that bench right now. Gettner makes two free throws, 11-10 Moline. Yeah, Moline sticking with their zone. Okay, now we got fresh people in there. Let's see how the Panthers have the interchangeable parts. Oh, well, has a good look, though. Good yeah, look. Offense well executed. Uh, pass maybe a little too strong or Hughes just didn't catch it. Travis for three. Boy, Coach, he just took that ball right down the court, set up, put that, buried that baby. Made it look easy, didn't he? Yes, he did. Right from the top of the key. I'll tell you, the, the Panthers the are doing a great Turn, job fires attacking off this. the glass. Count it. I don't think all last year we saw anybody attack this zone the way the Panthers are attacking it tonight. They gave people fits last year with this defense. Although say. they've been playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. Yeah. Travis Wilson, three-pointer again. What a wonderful first half we got here. 17-12 is our score. That's 10 points for Travis already in the first quarter. We got three minutes remaining. I think he's kind of taking this game on himself. So we'd rather not be behind. Hughes turns, fires. Won't go. A little strong. Kettner, the big rebound. rebound. My, what a rebound in there that time for Joe Kettner. What Whoops, and a bad pass by Moline. A little strong. Trying to get hand of it into the offense. Comes Josh Evans checking in. He's going to get Hughes. Yeah. Well, Courtney did it. You know, he did a nice job. He got himself wide open. Got him right where he wanted to be. But well, he, they, they, ran the, they ran the right play, and he just right. didn't catch the ball. Didn't so. catch the ball. Five-point lead now for the Maroons. Here we go. Brewster. That's Curtis Brewster, number 20, at the top. Lonzo on the wing. Morrow applying some good pressure out front. Trying to disrupt it. Good crisp passing by the Panthers tonight, Coach. Warden dribbles down. Ball is partially tipped. Morton comes up with it. He feeds off to Evans, and he travels before yeah. he could put it up. Four more well, I thought Morton was going to lay that I thing in too. for sure. One pass too many, maybe, but boy, what a great look. Number 40 comes in for Moline. That's Joe Manning, and Kettner's going to sit down. Man, alive, what great minutes they, he gave him there, especially with Springer in foul trouble. That's just added some extra extra uh, uh, energy to that offense. You know, and I think we're about as deep. Oh, pick this Alonzo. And Dexter, and Dexter fouls him right back, so... Well, you've seen that played out many, 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 many times. <laughs> but quick hands. Eli uh, Elijah does a beautiful job. Here comes Alex Sandoval, and he's going to get Alonzo. Alonzo gets a nice hand from Coach Olsen and the Panther fans here. Good quick hands by Alonzo. That's clean steel. Clean We're steel, sitting down no here question. at court side. Well, tonight. we got great seats. Because really, are you on the mid? We're on about the 49 <laughs> or the 51. <laughs> oh, man. Evans again. Evans, nice turnaround jumper. <laughs> Six points for Evans, pulls the Panthers to within three. Got Brewster guarding uh, Morrow out there. Travis. No, in the head, nice but he blows it up again. We get well, a jump ball. ball. Be the call. That's a good call. The yeah. ball's going to go to the Panthers. Well, coach, it's 17 to 12. Moline has the ball stolen, and UT scores. And then they come right back, and then UT forced the jump ball. And I didn't see who had that. Was that Borden or uh, I think it was Borden? I think it was Borden. Or maybe Evans. Could have been any one of those guys. They're, they were, I tell you, they're hitting the ball right there again. around it. Into Borden, kicks it over to Warden in the corner. Fires a three. No, it's a two. He's on the line. Five points. Five points now for Tyson Warden. 17-16 is our score. Coach Olson's working hard down there. Coach Dexter's kind of standing, taking it all in. Both these coaches do a great job. Now the steal by the Panthers coming. Panthers pick up the defensive pressure a little bit that yes, time and uh, kind of caught the, maybe caught the Maroons by some surprise there. Curtis Brewster, long three, ooh, air ball. Good steal by Borden. Well, Gets it ticked out of his hand. Quick turnover coming back the other way. Marcus Morrow, Travis Wilson. Great assist from Marcus Morrow to Travis Wilson. And right now when they need a play, Travis is making it right now, Coach. Well, we're under a minute. 1916, Maroons this with the lead. This is real basketball here. This is what everybody paid their money to come in here. There's probably a pretty good house here tonight, big, Coach. Big crowd here tonight. Oh, partially blocked. Late call, but 
Travis Wilson's going to pick up the foul. Warden going to go to the line. Three he's going to shoot three. One thing they're doing, UT is making some nice shots on the, on the perimeter, but every one of those threes is coming from farther back than the one before. Well, Brewster launched a, a, <laughs> an NBA three. That's right. Know. Well, and that one, I think, was pretty much out there, too. But he's with that, pressure. Wilson I thought one, was maybe on one of the cheerleaders might have followed him. <laughs> yeah, so deep yeah pushed corner. from behind, I think, was that call. First one's up and good. 19-17. Uh, I've got myself positioned just right so I can't see the scoreboard on that end. <laughs> well... Well, I'll tell you one thing, though. We at least have a better chance than we have at Moline. Sometimes we get that great booth. We got a great view of the floor. We can't see the can't board. See the clock or the board. <laughs> well, Warden ties it up. Ties straight score. free throws. 44 Nine seconds 19. to go. 44 seconds to go, Coach. Moline with the ball. A lot of pressure being put on Dexter now. Travis has got the ball. 34 seconds to go. Oh, steal coming Lazy by pass. Evans. Evans, he takes it to the hole. He's going to be fouled by Hanneman. UT's defense is really coming to the front right now. You know, Moline can't afford to let down at all. They can't, they can't take a, a, a momentary lapse no. of anything. Well, and all their passes are, are within about a half a, a second of being stolen. There's a, there's every pass, every dribble is being challenged from the get-go right now. If UT can play with this intensity, uh, I, you know, th this ball game is going to go right down the wire, as the others have done. Well, it's, 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 it, we're starting to see a carbon copy. This is right. the way the Panthers and the Maroons have played early in the season. The only, only good news for Moline at this point is that that they're, I think they're playing better than they have in the first two meetings, and they build them, they, you know, they dug themselves a little hole by half time and yeah. this time around we got ourselves a tie ball game with 27 seconds. I was going to say Moline may get the last shot but with UT's pressure they may not be able to hold the ball for 27 seconds. Sandoval with the quick hands. Got Dexter bothered. He throws the ball. The ref's not going to like that. Call that 20 it's second be timeout. 20. Well we got a 20 second timeout here. We'd like to thank these sponsors for making tonight's broadcast possible. Uh, Don Jacobs. Uh, mailboxes and Parcel Depot, Don and Sue Hicks, uh, owners. They're up in City Line Plaza in Moline. And, uh, of course, Family Ties Productions. We're always looking for uh, any small businessman who might not have a very big advertising budget, but uh, if you give Jess a call at 755-7607, might find a way to... To get your expand your yeah. advertising horizon. And you know, you work. and I travel around, and I've been doing the football, and you've done the basketball, wrestling, and so forth. And we've traveled around, and a lot of people watch these broadcasts more than most people would imagine. And so, if you've got a little interest in doing that, please contact Jess, because that's how this thing's going to continue. Got a travel yeah, call, travel. Dexter. He got Eleven down to his knee and picked up the dribble, and then he stood up, and that's illegal. And UT will get a shot at the last shot. Dexter's well, going to come out. Kettner's going to come in. We'll see if we can uh, break the tie here. Dad and son have a little father-son chat. <laughs> Inside of 10 seconds, 19-19 tie. Coach Olsen up off the bench, got a play call. He's got Warden at the arc. He fires it up, short. Ball's loose on the floor, 2-1. No shot. <laughs> Panther bench kind of wanted something to happen there. Well, I'll tell you, Coach, you couldn't ask for a better first quarter. 19-19 all. The winner of this game plays Galesburg Friday night. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with second quarter action in just a minute. Yeah, we're back here at the Panther Den. This is Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders bringing you the action. First quarter, Coach Sanders. Oh, wonderful ball game so far, Coach. Just the way that you'd like to see it play. Uh, other than a, than a few turnovers, but most of those have been forced by, by great defense, great shooting percentage. Looks, uh, It looks like we're going to have ourselves a great ball game here, and it should be. You know, and, bo and both teams showing their strength. Uh, Travis Wilson uh, nets 12 points in the first quarter. He's been their big score all year. And the Panthers collectively just hustle, 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 hustle. And, cr and create with their defense. Here we okay, got a foul. foul inside on board. That'll be his first. Well, they're trying to try to mass, match muscle with muscle in there now and put uh, Borden inside on Travis. So we'll see. <laughs> Everybody's always trying to get inside Travis's head. You know, because he's been starting for four years, yeah. matured every single year. I don't think that's going to work. Say, he, he's heard everything there is to hear. We got oh, a foul reach in on foul. the floor. Yeah. Oh, that's a big foul. Evans called 
Five team fouls apiece now. Early in the second quarter. Here comes Cunningham back in. He's going to get Evans with two fouls. Coach yep. Oven's going to sit him. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to take any chances there. Oh, nice play inside from Springer to Marcus Morrow on, on a great back pick. Nicely done. 21-19, Maroons. Moline, now they got Springer out front. That gives him a little different look on the defense. Kind of a 3-2, a 1-2-2. There's the hole. Oh, it's still in the Lord middle. Turns and fires, gets his own rebound, puts up a second shot. Hanneman clears the boards. Coach, when he goes up for a rebound, it, it, he's a man in when there. When he gets no his hands on it, he's, oh. he gets it. I'm anxious to see how he performs at the next level, Coach. He's worked so hard, I expect that he'll be a very, very fine player. Morrow drives. Foul. Going to be, gonna be a foul on uh, Going to be a foul on Sandoval. UT's gone with two small guards in there right now, and it looks like Moline's going to try to, to use Morrow and take him to the to the uh, to the board with that that match matchup that's in their favor right now. You know, having come to the two games the last week in the regional, uh, seen UT play against Rock Island, especially they went to that. Uh, to small guard lineup quite a bit. Well, had, you can do it good success. unless you get a bad matchup. Against Moline, I think they're against, they don't match up as well as they would against Rock Island, for example. Because Marcus Morrow, we saw a member a year ago, and they went man, UT playing man, they put Morrow on that low box and he can play down there as yeah. well as he can play outside. And But you can do it for a while because if they're so tenacious with their defense, the ball may not get there. Yeah. Two free throws and a 23-19 lead. Morrow on a basket and two free throws here in the second quarter. Doing a nice job. Panthers are getting good looks. Let's we'll see if they can keep it up. Board, Warden from the corner, just short. Morrow on the floor. Hit it, hit it. Oh, they're gonna call a foul on it. Sandoval stood his ground. That's a, that's a pretty good, uh, Pretty good defensive job. That's a great defensive job there by Sandoval. Two anticipating what uh, Morrow was going to do and right. just held his ground. Well, it became obvious. Of course, there's one of the things the coaches talk about. Pull up. He had Hanovan on the wing. All you got to do is plant, dump the ball off, and Hanovan jams one probably. Yeah. But reaching foul. That's going to go on Wilson. One and one both ways now, Coach. Yeah. Bonus both ways. Wilson. That's Travis's. Travis is second. Some of the we're in the bonus right now. Both teams are in the bonus at this point. One thing that uh, that I like is that right now this game is being called as a basketball game. If they foul, right. it's a foul. Right. And and uh, the players now have to adjust. Those are going to get called. The kids that can adjust are going to stay in the game, and those that can't adjust are going to be sitting. Well, here's Matt Cunningham at the line now for the Panthers, trying to get off that 19 mark. Had that at the end of the first quarter. Makes the first one. 23-20. I don't want to turn my head down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Morrow. The second, Morrow with the rebound. Maroons push the ball. Hanovan on a nice point, and they do a nice job that time. That ball went from Morrow to Kettner to Hanovan, and what a beautiful play. Made that look easy. Man. Man came down, nice little entry pass. And Hanovan uses his body so well down beautiful. on the blocks, it's hard to keep him out of there you when bet. he gets the ball down low. And he knew where to be. Inside outside game. Sandoval looks to get rid Boy, of the it. Panthers have found that opening in the middle. If they can just put a guy in there, can make that shot like Evans did right. early. Right. They got something going. There we go. They're setting up again. There's Gordon in the hole there. He gets another pass in there. He's reach in, reach in, puts it up. In and oh. out, won't go. Hanovan tips Hanneman. to himself and controls the rebound. Morrow oh, wow. on the run. Springer, layup. Timeout, 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 UT. 27-20 here at the Panther Den. We're going to take a short break here. Maroons on a little run right now from 19-19 tie to 27-20. We'll be back in just a minute. Ugh. Well, we're back here. 20-second timeout for the Panthers. We'll see if that has some effect on the momentum. Well, you talk about how easy the last two Maroons were during the break there. Uh, Maroons come down and make two fast break buckets. Uh, they're kind of taking the Panther defense out of the picture by uh, by making those quick passes and getting some easy lay-ins. Yep. 
Well, I think it's a good adjustment by Moline because earlier they're getting it across and trying to set up, and UT was pressuring them clear back here to the 10 second line and making some steals. This way, a couple quick passes and a layup. Well, Panthers working the ball around the perimeter. Maroons have adjusted their defense slightly. They stretch it out. Nice pass inside. Evans up. Rolls around. Won't go. Hanneman. You're going to get a foul on Evans. It's going to be a big foul. That's on Evans. That's three. Yep. And I believe Hanneman that's had a nice be. position on the inside there, and Evans got him across the arm. And we'll go to the other end as uh, Courtney Hughes up off the Panther bench. He's going to come. Evans has got to sit now for the rest of the half with yep. three fouls. Yeah, we got several guys with two, Coach, so that'll make a difference. I, you know, obviously, uh, the Panthers have found a way to get the ball inside against that 1-2-2, and two, two, and it is. That's where the hole is against the 1-2-2. Two, two, is high near the free throw line and in that lane. Now all you got to do is have a guy that can put that ball somebody's in the basket. Gotta, somebody's got to knock him down. Right. Make Moline change their defense. Well, so here's far, Evans has hit a couple. Evans has hit a couple, and, uh, and Borden hit one. Hanavan hits the free throw, 28-20, and slowly but surely the Maroons build this lead, and the Panthers have not done much here in the first three minutes of the second quarter. Brewster, Brewster with the rebound. He brings it. He come in and on the uh, timeout. Sandoval against Morrow. Morrow's going to reach in. Look, the refs are calling him. They're calling him consistently. Yeah, you got to say that. Well, and it's a foul. I, I mean, I, I, I can't. Uh, you and I have sat uh, together watching some basketball games in this gym this year and not doing TV as often as we certainly would like to do. But there have been games that are, are way, way, way too rough. And the game isn't designed to be played like that. This is the way basketball is designed to be played. For the athletes that play good defense, move their feet, quick hands, right. can steal the ball and make plays. The, uh, the offensive players can take a the, shot without getting killed. The ball does not begin at the elbow. No, you know, obviously that's with right. That's exactly tonight. right. And kids Sandoval. who make drives or trying to move with the basketball aren't getting pushed clear out the 10-second line either. Panthers looking to play. Look out. Oh, my. Great pass. Springer to Hanneman, and they solved that press defense, Coach. 30-22. to 22. Well, it's obvious that the Maroons were prepared for some Panther uh, pressure here, too. Well, they sure were. They've, made, they've had three or four real easy buckets here. Now Turn around it. by Ward in, and it stays and They worked down. him that time, Coach. They worked him in there, and he's probably the best pure shooter the Panthers have, and now they're putting him on that low post. Morrow to hand of it again for an easy layup. Fantastic shooting, but you don't miss too many layups. Good steal by Kettner. Going to go coast to coast. Nice pass. That's a good call. That is a good call by the That's going to get wiped off. Now, no basket. Bonus coming up for Molink. Boy, Kettner did a nice job on that steal. Oh. Here comes Cunningham and Borden back in for the Panthers. Joe Hughes will sit down. Brewster will sit down. Now, at that time, Kettner did a good job avoiding the contact. He made Sandoval go out and, and, and get in front of him. And, of course, that's a foul on the defense when you slide sideways like that. Goes in a little shooter's bat roll that time. Well, Kenner's got good shooting form and good yes, rotation does. on the ball. You're going to get those bounces more times than not. This no, is a good lineup they've got in there right now for Moline with Kettner, uh, Morrow, Hanovan, Wilson, and Springer. That's an awful solid lineup, too. Dexter's not playing as well tonight as he has in the past, and they, they go to a little different look. Ten point lead now for the Maroons. Panthers need to answer. They do, really do. Four minutes to go here in Maroons the second quarter. Maroons have extended their defense out be, to the arc and beyond a little bit, knowing that the Panthers want to shoot those threes. Here's Borden from the corner. Too strong, won't go, and number 50, Man. Ian Hanneman rakes down another board. On the run again, Travis Wilson. Oh, look out. Bodies everywhere. Look at Kettner in there. Kettner's kept that ball alive. And the Panthers are going to have to slow the whole thing down now if they're going to have a chance. 36-24, Moline. Boy, Joe Kettner's made a real difference here in about the last three minutes. He really has. And, you know, here's a game where you, you don't know what Morrow's going to do, how much he's going to play, and that kind of stuff. Panthers and get aboard. He starts the ball game, and then, then he, he proceeds to play almost the whole first half here. And he's got the nine points. That's a great job. Great job. He's a good player. We've seen him play before this year. He's not a big surprise to Moline, folks. Sandoval, long oh, three, won't go. Man. Hanneman rips the ball. You know, he does t several things well. Travis Wilson, 4-3, look out. Won't go. 
Springer keeps it alive, keeps it alive again. Kenny Springer, 38, 24, Moline here. 2.48 to go. One thing I was going to say also about Hanneman, Coach, he just has that knack. He's always on the right side of the board. He, you know, instinctively, he's, he's some kids are like for where the board is going to come to. Yes, he does. And boy, I'll tell you, if it's on his side, he's going to get it. Panthers looking for that shot. It's going to try to put them right back in the ball game here. They need a basket desperately right now. Yeah, they, they're trying not to panic, but that's hard knowing what the score is, and Moline's got a run going. Down low to Cunningham, but he can't get it in. He's got a little too much body by Hanneman. Hanneman's going to pick up his second. A little too much body, I think, yep, there. I think so, Had too. his hands up, but he had the legs and hips on. Yep. Well, Cunningham did move away from the basket. Now, we, are, we didn't have a real good angle at that, similar to what Coach Dexter had, but Cunningham did move over there all by himself. Manning comes into ball game number 40, and so does Dexter. Kettner's going to sit down. Travis Wilson is going to sit down. We'll take a look at that with 2.21 to go here. Marcus Morrow. Hanneman. Manning. An offensive board for Manning. Moline gets three shots, two offensive boards, and it's 40 to 24. And there's the difference. You just said it. Moline gets three shots. Panthers have been getting one. That's right. If they get any. If they get any. 40-24. Three ball. Tyson Ward. Uh, Panthers needed that one. 13 points for Warden. He's got half their points almost. Dexter on down there. Coming. Spranger takes a look inside. They don't have the numbers. Oh, tomorrow. Nope, not going to count it out on the floor. No shot, but a great pass, nevertheless. Alex Sandoval called for the foul. That's going to be his third. Nine team fouls now. Sandoval's going to sit as Alonzo comes it's back a in. Bit of a, a little bit of a gamble here with Travis Wilson coming. He's got two fouls, doesn't he, Coach? Yeah, he got two fouls. 137 to go and a 13-point lead. He's got two, but Hanneman's got two, and he's going to go to the bench. He's going to rest. Well, my, well that, you're resting you're resting your big-time players where they both aren't having a chance to pick up third foul at the same time, kind of. So Marcus Morrow, a little strong, but curls it right back in. 41-27 right now. Marcus Morrow. Nicely done. Talk about rebounding, Coach. Hanneman's got six rebounds already. We talked about Morrow on a steal. Whoop, he's going to get called for a travel. <laughs> he's an athlete, Coach. That's great anticipation. Man. The Maroons are doing now what the Panthers did to the Maroons earlier, where they, right. they got a little lazy with the passes. You get a little nonchalant, and they're going to pick them off. Deep three from Warden. Brewster going for the nice board. Nice try by Brewster. Going to go, go the Maroon's way. For Moline, comes, uh, Justin Ward, a 6'4 freshman, going to come in the ball game. He's going to give Springer a rest. There's another player with two fouls taking a rest there. Coach Dexter doing a nice job. All he's got out there now is Travis Wilson with those two fouls. He can get everybody that, that second half with nobody with three. They, they're in good shape. Travis, Marcus Morrow, Manning, and the Maroons are going to set up with 108 to go. This helps the Panthers a little bit because they're not, at least they're not making layups off of this thing. Manning, nice pass. Dexter, 4-3. Count it. Three ball for Ryan Dexter. 45-27. Well, I was just going to comment the Panthers make the Maroons run some offense that time, but <laughs> they, they ran three instead of two. They ran it darn well, too. Well, there wasn't any panic in their eyes that time, Coach. Alonso! Oh, oh man. Three won't go. Panthers, Brewster battling, goes to Ward, and he kicks it down to Cunningham. Fake, turn. Marcus Morrow on a big rebound. Maroons on the run. Stop, pop, long. Manning has that rebound, does a nice job. Inside. <laughs> Big freshman Justin Ward trying to muscle one up there, but just didn't get it with 17 seconds to go. 45-27, 18-point lead now. 
Nice pass from Dexter. Warden to pick Borden. Up a foul. He's fouled by, uh, I think that Dexter coming down. Yeah, Dexter, number five, going to pick that foul up. We're going to shoot two, I believe, here, Coach. Yeah, that puts him in the super bonus now. Dexter with the foul. Here comes uh, Kittner back. Kittner's going to go in. He's going to go in and get Wilson. Very, very smart move here. Very smart move. Wilson doesn't like it, but well, no. said, but you also understand that this guy over here on the sideline with the uh, brown sport coat on is in charge. Right. And he wants you to play the whole second half. So just come out of the game. You're going to have to come down here and sit on the bench, that's for sure. I don't like that, Coach. I don't like I'll that at all. The air. No, I don't like that either. That's showing the coach up. Coach, I thought he had outgrown that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm and we, we are not critical people over here on the bench. No, we're not. But I thought he had outgrown that. But if he's going to do that, then he's got a lot of growing up to do. They're in the basketball player or fan in this stands that knows anything about basketball doesn't realize he needs to be sitting his butt on the bench right now. That's just good coaching. Morrow pulls Stop, up. Stop, pop, two. That's time. Time runs out. Moline. Builds a 47-29 lead. Coach, we're 19-19 at the end of the first quarter. Moline builds it to 47-29 here in the second quarter as we go to halftime. Well, we got some stats here. Boy, the Panthers, I'm just looking down at my book. They scored two baskets in that quarter. Wow. A two and a three by uh, Tyson Warden. Everything else with a free throw to, for their 10 points. The Moline, on the other hand, scored one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine twos and a three, plus added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of eight free throws. So wow. that's why the score right now is 47 to 29. Well, you know, you say, well, we scored 10 points there. For the Panthers, that's not all that bad, but uh, I don't know what my math is. Well, we got 28 points from the Maroons, right? So, well, let's take a break here. It's halftime here at the Panthers' den. The winner of this ball game advances to play Galesburg in the sectional championship game. And right now, it looks very, very good for the Moline Maroons as they lead 47-29. We'll be back with second half action in just a minute. here at the Panther Den is Jim Sanders with Jim Smith. Tim Sanders is doing stats. Jess Medina is on the camera and producing this thing. It's the TCI Channel 38 of Family Ties production. Welcome to sectional basketball. We're at halftime where Moline leads 47-29 over the Panthers. Coach, Coach how about some uh, scoring in the first half? Well, kind of what you expect from the Panthers. Uh, Tyson Ward is leading the way out of 49 points. He's got 13 of them. Our <laughs> technical <laughs> difficulties have been uh, improved. Like I said, I was saying that so the scoring for the Panthers is about like you'd expect. 13 out of Tyson Warden, 13 of their 29. Nobody else uh, near double figures. Josh Evans, three buckets in the first quarter for six. We had six early, Coach. John, right? first Jonathan Jonathan right Warden with four. Uh, Alonzo with his one tray for three. Uh, Alex Sandoval, a couple of uh, free throws for two. Matt Cunningham with a free throw. Uh, for Moe, pretty balanced. Their, their big score is, was Travis Wilson, 12 in the first quarter, didn't score a point in the second quarter, didn't need him. No, didn't need him. Everybody's all make, they, making layups at that Ian point. Ian Hanneman, nine points, four buckets in a free throw. Joe Kettner, kind of a surprise scoring-wise. He's a good, solid basketball player, but I don't think they were counting on nine points out no. of Joe Kettner. Well, Kettner came in with a 1.3 scoring average. Marcus Morrow, eight points all in the second quarter. Yep. That kind of picks up the slack for where Travis left exactly. off. Exactly. And then Ryan Dexter pops through a three for his three points uh, in neat. the second quarter. Well, domination on the boards by Moline. Our stats have uh, Moline uh, with uh, Hanovan had seven rebounds there. And uh, something like a 13 to 4 rebound edge over the Panthers, Coach. That's that's outstanding as far as controlling backboard is concerned. And we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, talk about Kenny Springer's two yeah. buckets in the second quarter for you four bet. points. So they Maroons really spread it around in the second quarter, and as a result, pulled away. Yep. Well, here we go. Panthers have the ball to start the second half. They trail 47 to 29. 
Evans down low, turns and fires. Well, he scores first. He can, he can consistently get that ball inside. He's the one threat they have inside. It's going to score on a regular basis. Keep feeding him that ball. Panthers are going to pass, and Hunter steals the ball. D. Hunter down the lane, puts it up. Won't go, but got a block call. That's going to go on Kittner. Yep. Well, the Panthers that time, instead of playing that pressure man-to-man -man defense, jump into a little trap there at, at, at the half-court level and did a beautiful job. Kettner's picked up his first foul. Well, they dribbled right into the trap that time. Picked the, came across the 10-second line and picked up the dribble. Both bad ideas against the half-court trap. D. Hunter going to the line. Been a fairly consistent player uh, for the Panthers this year. He really has, really has. Strong defensive player, handles the ball well. Well, you know, he's taken some very good players out of ball games this year right. with his defense. The only problem is, is you know, when you gotta try to play somebody like Travis Wilson, D just right this year, at least as a junior, isn't strong enough to cover him. Panthers picking up the defensive pressure. Springer, Springer, three, three Springer. Springer. 50 to 31. Beautifully done. Good ball. Moline is looking real sharp. And if they continue at this pace, this should be a fantastic game Friday night. Evans again. Cunningham. Evans, that's a nice dish from Cunningham. Cunningham did a nice job there, Coach. Beautiful pass. Now going a little bit three-quarter level with Hunter picking up early. Alonzo and Warden are going to pick up as they come across. And there's your trap again. Moline wasn't fooled that time. Dexter's got to be a little careful with that one dribble and then picking that thing up. Three-pointer coming for Wilson. Nothing but net. Man, 53-33. If he gets squared up, he's going to make it. Oh. Yeah, I do believe. Well, and there have been some people talking, you know, this year about what a great player he is. And, you know, can he, can he shoot the ball as a guard, you know, at the college level, a point guard maybe even. Wilson, great hustle, out of bounds, saves it in, and Kettner with the ball. But, of course, he shoots the ball like that. He can play for anybody. Yeah. No doubt. And I'd like to see somebody take about a 6-2 guard. Oh, my. A 6-2 guard and try to play him down that low post. Well, oh, Kettner, nice dish to Hanovan there for another easy bucket for Hanovan. Very unselfish play by the Maroons. A 22-point lead now. Evans wide open. He doesn't quite know it because he's back to the basket. I didn't know how open he was. Uh -huh. there. Lone saw it front on the dribble, finds a hole, puts it up too hard. Big rebound. Hanovan just cleans the boards off. Dexter, Dexter cross Kettner, court. Nice, nice pass fast. again, wide open three again. Won't go this time for the Maroons, but they're getting great looks. Great looks Boy, right they're now. They're getting wide open shots. Hunter penetrates a little bit. Warden from the corner. Springer can't control. Hunter, Hunter, Hunter with the board goes there's up. That third, there's that third foul they on get, Wilson. That's going to be it. Yeah, there it is. Hunter, Travis. a nice rebound that time. Big Springer was on the board for Moline that time, but you can tell just the difference in strength between Springer, who is a fantastic player, and Hanneman, because he did, couldn't quite control it, and all of a sudden Hunter ended up with the ball. And, and when Hanneman grabs one, nobody else is going to get it. Well, D. Hunter goes to the line. He's going to shoot a pair. He knocks down the first one. Here comes Jonathan Borden into the game. He's going to get... Uh, he's going to get... Cunningham out of there. Cunningham. Well, Borden's going to try to play in that, that, that opening in the middle there in the lane uh, against that zone, and that's a, he's a, probably a better shooter than Cunningham is in there. Well, and he's had the opportunity to sit over next to the coach and say, coach says, here, see how yep. that's going. So go ahead and take that exactly shot. Exactly right. Moline breaking the three-quarter court trap. Panthers drop back, and they're going to play it at the half-court level. They're reaching a little bit, making some good moves. <laughs> Moline crowd is wanting to call that as a foul. Kick, great defense by Hunter. Kick like that, of course, it disrupts your offense. Now Moline's got to get the ball back in bounds again, get it across the 10-second line again, and try to reset. Every time they do that, the Panthers have a chance to play better defense. And here we go. we got Hunter, Lonesaw going to work the ball. And there's a bad pass. Just what uh, UT needed. And that wasn't... Oh! Hanneman couldn't quite hang on to that one. Yeah, here we go. We got a player coming in. Morrow's going to come in the ball game, and Dexter's going to sit down. Panthers are going to have the ball underneath their own basket here yeah. on the 
Out of bounds, rebound off the Maroons. I'll go back talk a little bit about what we did earlier. I thought I think the officiating crew is doing a nice job. They're they're they're, uh, they're the kids are playing basketball. Partially blocked looks like that time it's going to be Moline ball. Tyson Warden wants a foul. Hanover was was in behind him, didn't have his hands up, but he was. <laughs> I think he bumped him with the body because Ian was uh, he was trying to get out of there. Warden kind of jumped back into him. Hunter. E. Hunter on the floor for the ball. And a jump ball. Good jump hustle. Ball. He's going to go to the Maroons. Good hustle. Coach, I like the way D plays basketball. He just He's very aggressive. He hustles all the time. I guess we can sit here as two football coaches and talk about what at least I've seen as a change in him this year right. in basketball, strength-wise, and everything else. And I'm going to I'm going to say that playing football this last year had something to do with that. You know, we, and as football coaches here at UT, we've uh, yeah, good call. Got an illegal pick set up that time by Kettner. Yeah, he was moving. He had his feet moving just ever so slightly. Kettner called for the foul. So he picked up two second-half fouls, yes. three for the Maroons. Back to D Hunter. The football coaches, D's effort and improvement haven't gone unnoticed. And, uh, you know, we're looking for big things out of D next year as a, as a receiver, defensive back type. Because he's yeah. a... Well, it takes a year. You never play the game at all. It takes a year to kind of get used to hitting and getting hit and all that kind of stuff. Moline's got Manning in the ball game. Hadovan hits off the baseline wide open. He'll make that shot a lot. 57-35, and UT's playing better, but they keep getting farther behind. Yeah, and UT's getting pretty good looks. They're just not making them, and right. uh, they're getting one shot. Moline's uh, cleaning the glass pretty good right now as they have the first half. Yes. And they're staying with their zone, basically. Find a little hole. Evans from the baseline. Josh Evans. Evans. Josh Evans. Well, he's, he's got some streaks, hasn't he? He's got three third-quarter baskets to match his three first-quarter baskets. Springer. Well, nice tip out by Springer that time. Travis Wilson for three, short. Springer, or, uh, Manning, my mistake. Manning trying to control that board, but can't do it. Lonzo yeah. comes up with the ball. Quickly to Warden. He fires for three, knocks it down. So Warden adds three to his 13 in the first half for 16 points. Five quick points by the Panthers. Springer to Hanneman. Power. Got it. Old-fashioned three-pointer coming here, Coach. That's going to go on. On Warden. Tyson Warden, that's his first. I've been very impressed. I haven't seen Moline play for a while, and, uh, man, they passing the ball well. Here comes Alex Sandoval for Alonzo. Hannah, we're going to go to the line, like you said, to try to complete the old-fashioned yeah. three-point play. Yeah. 3.01 left, 19-point Maroon lead. Yeah. It went from 22, and, and then the Panthers had five straight, and now it could be answered here with three coming back the other way. 60-40, Maroons. Yeah, the Panthers are going to have to continue running offense and hope that there's some major breakdown by Moline at this point in time. Not going to get that one there. Too many leapers in the middle for the Maroons. They'd that's a tough pass to try to force in there. Get that ball to Hanneman here pretty quick because he's gonna he's isolated down low there. Manny. That's a soft little shot, Coach. I didn't think I had a chance. That baby laid right on the rim. That, that ball wanted to climb out, but he had a little, like you Man, said, a little shooter's touch. Well, you got, uh, with Kettner playing well, Manny playing well, uh, Justin Ward giving him some quality minutes uh, as a freshman. Their, their depth is looking better all the time yeah. for Moline. Good offensive rebound, a rebound there by D. Hunter. Yes. Warden on the baseline, pull up, jumper off the side shot. of the bank board. He was going to pick up a foul. You just knew it. He was he was determined <laughs> to get that one. And the officials said, okay, you wanted that bad. I'm going to give it to you. Quit wasting our time well, out here. I'll whack you a couple times. Yep. Here. Aaron, he's going to go have a little chat with Coach Olson. Yep. Well, we'll see what the Panthers do defensively. They play tough man-to-man -man pressure. Start the second half, they go into a three-quarter court, kind of a token pressure here with Hunter out on the point and then trying to force you to get across the 10-second line and then go to a half-court trap. But the Maroons did a beautiful job of passing the ball. Great pass to Hanneman. Oh, great pass. Morrow to Hanneman. Great assist. 54. 64. Excuse me. 64-40. Hanneman, uh, nine points here in the third quarter. 
Oh, oh, call Morrow for traveling. Check coming out. Feet coming out. I was I was he, looking away. I didn't see. He it. must have. That's a hard one to call because that the official who made the call is the lead should be hit, should be heading the other way and there's a guy two feet away from that play. But if you see it, you call it. That's all. 24 point lead now. Damn. Evans kicks it to Sandoval. Eyes to Bucket. Hunter block shot Blocked. by. Look out. Oop. Oh, man, he's going to pick up a foul there. But he was looking to get it to Travis after well, the nice block. That was a slammer coming, folks. No. We'll never know. Manning called for the foul. Joe Manning picks up his first foul. Four team fouls now on the Maroons. Yep. 132 left here, third quarter. Panthers will end bounds on the far side. Or the near side, yep. as you look at it. Yes. That was our hardest problem. We went to Rock Island yeah. and did football Josh games Evans. over there. Nice move. <laughs> we had the camera. We had wide receivers uh, to the left. And over here, the camera It's the right. We, we had all kinds of trouble there. Morrow pulls up. Yeah, nice rebound by Brewster. Brewster. Nice rebound. He's getting some quality minutes here in his sophomore year. Evans at the from the level. baseline. Boy, there's Two a bright a spot, too, for the junior. Ten points for Evans in the third quarter. Gives him 16 on the game. To tomorrow to Travis Wilson. The Maroons will set up now. Nice attempt at a steal there by Sandoval. Morrow in on the low post. Knocked out of bounds. And stolen by Evans. Beautiful job. Nice work by the Panthers. Oh, didn't need that one. Marcus, you didn't need that one. Sometimes you think you can get in there and get it. Nearly error-free Moline play in the first half, of, but now they're, you know, you kind of look at that board and you can't help but do that. 20-point lead, 43 seconds to go in the third quarter. They didn't get either one of them in. Didn't get either one of them in. They didn't know who... Ball goes out of bounds. Two subs for Moline after dad and son try to decide who's going to go in for home and who is not listening to home. These are good seats. <laughs> These are great seats. I love that. But Dexter is in the ball game along with Justin Ward. And they got six guys on the floor. Coach Dexter <laughs> had to go out and get one. <laughs> Coach, I've tried to get football players a hook before, but that was the hook. Yeah. Well, who's got me by the arm? Dexter brings the ball across the 10 second line. He walked, but 27 seconds. And look like Moline's gonna try to hold for one shot. What are the chances they're gonna get it all the way down to without a, without a, a turnover here? Well, we'll just shoot it. Oh, in and out. Brewster gets a nice push off and rebounds yeah. well. Sandoval. Brewster, back well, up, left hand. Shot nice there. Go. What an exciting end to that quarter, Coach. Well, the Panthers cut the lead slightly, but it's still 64-46. That's an 18-point lead any way you cut it. That's right where we were at halftime. So uh, Maroons pulled out the 24. Panthers come back to cut it back to 18. But, uh, boy, the Panthers got the work cut out. Josh Evans, 10 points in that quarter, kind of kept the Panthers alive. Yeah, Only two other baskets. Yep. He's going to stay out of foul trouble because he had a great first quarter and then sat a lot in the second quarter with fouls, and now he's doing an excellent job in the third quarter. So as Evans goes, looks like the Panthers are going to go this, this ball game. Yeah, and Ian Hanovan answered for the Maroons. He had, uh, he had nine points in that quarter, so everybody else scored one bucket there. Well, we'd like to take while we have a between-quarter action here, take another spot here to, to uh, thank our sponsors for tonight. Don Jacobs, we thank him for his sponsorship. <laughs> helping you bring these broadcasts to you. Mailboxes and Parcel Depot, that's Mark and Sue Hicks is the owners over in City Line Plaza in Moline for all your business needs. And of course, Family Ties Productions, that's us. If you're a small time, small business uh, man without a, much of an advertising budget, we could be the answer for you. If you want to get some, uh, want to get some advertising, let us know. This will yep. be on uh, tomorrow night, well, which is great. Thursday night. Uh, Give Jess a call at 755-7607 for more details about Moline how you can become figure, a sponsor. They, they can't figure out who's supposed to be in the ball game. We got Kedner running in here after the play's already been inbound, so we'll see. Sandoval from New York, cut it. We'll see. Well, here, here come the Panthers. Moline, Moline's a little disorganized right now. Moline's yep. going to go with Morrow, Travis Wilson, Springer, Hanovan, and Kettner. 
And the Panthers got Hunter, Brewster, Sandoval, Evans, and Borden. Coach, you're talking about advertising. I'm going to go out on a limb. You know, we'd like anybody to be interested in doing some advertising. We really would appreciate it. I think it's going to be a bargain for them. I'm going to go out on a limb. We'll take any big time, as far as big company advertising, some kind of corporate sponsor. If you want to be involved in this, you bet we'd you. love to hear from you, too. That's, that's the answer, is a corporate sponsorship. And I think there are a lot of people who are watching this, so... Let's see what happens with that. But we'd love to have you uh, back the program we're involved with right now. The Panthers on a run again. Whew. Well, good defense at both ends. Nice finish by Sandoval. Comes down, fakes the pass, and goes up to the layup. Man. That's a nice move. U UT right now is on a real nice run. And they got the lead down to 15. Anything can happen, folks. Man. They, they played some barn burners, these two teams. <laughs> well, UT came back from this much against Rock Island the other night, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so. they were down 13. Yeah. So. Well, let's see what happens. With a lot less time to go yeah. than this. That's right. Well, Moline's got to regain their composure, make a couple shots. That's all they got to do right now. They're the dominant ball club in this ball game right now, and it's their game to win or lose. A little, a little patience right now. Give the ball to Hanneman. That's the guy you want to have the ball. Sometimes I think they forget he's out there, and he's going he's to score every time he gets the ball if you get him halfway close. Uh, they got him. He's got him at kind of a high well, they're post. They're going to get right Travis now. out of the corner. That's a heartbreaker there. Just like that, 69-51. That's four threes for uh, Wilson so far. Oh my! Hanneman on a huge block. Springer on the run. Coast to coast. Springer. Hanneman blocks. Springer layup. 71-51, just like that, and there's your ball game. Right back to 20. Man, a lot. Moline said, okay, we're, we're, we're through fooling around right now. And there's Hanneman again on a steal. He's got about eight or nine rebounds, coach. Morrow, in and out, tip in, Kenny Springer. Oh, great tip. Oh, my, 73-51, Moline. Great tip by Springer. Why are we doing this? The clock's running. Well, there's no reason in the world to let that ball roll all the way down the court. Warden, deep three. No good. Over the back. Yeah, Bob's going to go on more on than uh, Evans, and he bumped into each other. Both quickly backed off. Manning's going to come in the ball. I'm going to take a wild guess. Morrow's coming out. Well, that's four fouls on him, too. Yeah. So the Panthers will be in the bonus. Uh, next foul will put the Panthers in yep. the bonus. 5-24. It's a 20-point lead. That's a pretty big hole to climb on yeah, up when sure you're playing is. a team the caliber of Moline. That's right. And especially when they can steal the ball like that. Block shots, do those good things, run the floor. Nice board. Nice move to the baseline. Yeah, more 18 Spr points for Warden now. Springer brings that ball across, gets it over to Manning to Kettner. Kettner gets hand check. Brewster got his hands on him. Curtis Brewster first foul. That's only three fouls now on the Panthers, yeah. so so they can they can be very aggressive still, and if they can get a few steals, why who knows? Spranger. Panthers going to go man, man to man. man now. Spranger drives. Nice pass to Kettner. We're going to no. get a walk. Yeah. It's a good call. I didn't see his feet, but I saw his head moving. <laughs> That'll get you. That'll, That'll get, get you, you every time. Ward and another. Oh, that's a two pointer. I couldn't see his feet, but I knew it was close. Well, yep. 18 point. Back yep. to 18. 73 oh. 55. Wild pass out of bounds. Coach Dexter says, hey, let's get a timeout. Coach Dexter says, we'll take a 20. And why don't we take a quick 20 second break here while I compose myself and look at the scorebook. We're back. Okay. Just looking. Panthers, Panthers have actually outscored the Maroons here. Two, four, six, nine to two, four, six. Oh, no, even up. Yeah. Nine to nine. Well, they've been some runs. I haven't I haven't kept exact track, but I know the Panthers made a, about a five-point run and bang, bang, about seven back from Moline. 
But we'll see. The Panthers, they, like we mentioned earlier in the ball game, we said it several times. You're going to get that 100% effort every time yeah. out. You're going to get it right now. There's no quitting these kids. So, and they're playing in a sectional tournament, and that's great experience for next year. Yeah, every one of the uh, kids on the floor right now is going to be back. There's a three-pointer, Josh three. Evans. Well, he scores in the fourth quarter. I yep. didn't know if he scored in those three quarters. Travis Wilson with the ball. Panthers 15. Jeez. Ball's on the floor. We got a jump ball. And the ball's going to go back to the Maroons on an alternate possession. The Panthers are still reaching and, and, and knocking that ball loose and creating potential turnovers. Moline well, ball. 407. Maroons will get the ball at their end line. I'll take a second, wipe some uh, sweat off the, the floor down there, but this is this is pretty interesting as far as scoring averages for the year for the for the Panthers. Josh Evans comes into this ball game, coach, averaging about six points a ball game, and he's had a, a career ball game here tonight. And, and the Panthers have needed every bit of that to stay close. Well, he's made some he's made some big uh, big hoops when the Panthers have needed. Like I said in the third quarter, there it was all uh, Josh Evans. Yep. He's got 19 points on the night now. Wow. Great effort. Great effort. Tyson Warden uh, with uh, 20. If I've got my if my math is right yep. here, yeah. Molina, well, they're going to stay with that zone. There's no question about that. Hanneman's going to pick one up here now. Warden trying to drive to the baseline. Yep. Hanneman can't get his feet going. That's three on Hanneman. That'll put the Panthers in the bonus. Dexter yells out to his team, quit fouling. Quit fouling. Always sometimes good advice. You got, sometimes you got to make some of the simplest coaching co comments, and we'll find out if they're going to listen or not. That's the next thing. You well, you know, it's hard to tell the guys not to play hard. And Ward was making a good move to the baseline. There yep. we go. He knocks the first one down. 59-73. Tomorrow comes in the ball game. He, he may not be able to hear, but he did come right in the ball game. Gonna come in back in, Manning. brings his four fouls with him. Yep. Well, with four minutes to go, Coach Decker says, why hold him on the bench, yeah. huh? At this point in time, it's not gonna make that much difference. Tyson however, looking to cut it to 13. However, I was gonna say, you and need your best does. players in the ball game, especially your ball handlers now, and they need something to happen. 13 Molina's points in four minutes. Hanneman with the ball tomorrow. Maroons will set up with uh, Travis was on the point. Rotates off the point now. Kettner, a little delay action here. They're going to spread the floor a little bit. Panthers Working for the double pressure team. the ball. Wilson that's, thinks that's, better of it. That's not a bad move at this point. Better back, back to him again. He's not going to give this one no, up. No, I'll get two of those. I'm going to get one up. Oh, Springer almost follows that up. Oh, tough play. Tough little pass there. Warden couldn't handle that. And the Panthers need the basket there in the worst way. You know, and they know they got to score quickly, so they were out running hard, but uh, just couldn't quite handle the pass. So here we go, Maroon's ball. Uh, Hanneman. And the Panthers can foul. They got some fouls to give here right now, so this may not be a bad time to start doing that. Well, I'll take a take a chance on some steals and uh, on the off the dribble. Spranger with the ball out front. Panthers trapping. You think they'll start fouling Wilson. eventually, but that's right now. Moline is throwing the ball away a few times to help him out. Kettner gets a shot blocked. Crowd doesn't like that call, but I, all I saw was ball. Evans with the block. Brewster, long three. And that's a great shot if it goes. That's right. That's one of those where it's oh no, and if it goes in, it's a great play. And the Maroons are still trying to take some time off the clock, but they haven't really got into sync here with this delay game. There it is, back cut, and then way lose it out of bounds. Boy, that was going to be a nice play. Good luck by Hannah, but oh, he's finding yeah. Wilson coming strong across the baseline, and uh, Travis might have just taken his eyes off the ball. So we're still at 13-point gap yeah, with 225 to go here. Man. D. Hunter on the drive. Foul. Well, the Panthers can score with the clock not running, which is what they want to do. That's going to go on Kettner. Timeout, coach, in the worst way right now. 
They really need to get reorganized here. Moline is going to take a timeout with two minutes, 23 seconds to go. Moline leads 73-60, but the Panthers are on a run. Do they have enough time? We'll find out in just a minute. 20. Well, we're back here at the Panther Den. This is Jim Sanders with Jim Smith. This is TCI Channel 38 of Family Ties Production. We got Jess Medina on the camera tonight. Tim Sanders help with stats. We've got ourselves a ball game, Coach. Well, it's been it's been, a, it's been an uphill struggle most of the night for the Panthers. The Maroons have slowly pulled away, steadily pulled away. Every time the Panthers make a little run, the Maroons will answer back five, four or five points. Yeah. And, uh, and the, they're in the middle of a little bit of a run here. We've been stuck on this score, 73-60, for a minute and uh, 37 seconds. So, yeah, D. Hunter took care of that one. So, D. knocks down the first one. Gets going to get a bonus here. Well, what seemed like a nice, easy night of work for the uh, for the Maroons and for Coach Dexter is becoming a long fourth quarter. Here comes Jonathan Borden back in the game. He's going to take out. Uh, he's going to come get Brewster. Panthers going to pick up full court now. Make the make the Maroons, if nothing else, play up tempo. Yep. And Maroons got away from well, either that or the Panthers made some really good adjustments to that fast break because they haven't had an easy basket in quite some time. Block shot. Wilson, Wilson keeps it alive. Tip. Wilson keeps it alive. Hanneman actually kept that ball alive to Wilson for the basket. That's a big hoop. That's a big hoop. Panthers Huge. stopped there. They potentially could get it to single digits as it is at 75-62. Man. Evans in the lane. He's having a great game, Coach. Great ball game. 11-point lead for the for the Maroons. Now they're going to set it up. Get it back out to Wilson. Now they got a foul. And there's Coach one. Wilson trying to get the Panthers to foul, and Alonzo finally gets the message. Well, you know, the other thing is, too, sometimes not having fouls hurts you in this situation because now they got two more to give. They got two more to give, and you got to chase guys around, waste eight seconds, ten seconds, maybe. Right. Minute 41 is yep. all that's left here, and they, they trail by 11. So oh, but that could happen, too, though. That could happen also. Tyson Warden brings it down quickly, finds D. Hunter on the baseline, goes up strong, puts it in. Nine-point game, Coach, and a foul. And it's been single. This is the first time it's been single digits for a long right. time. Jonathan Borden, a little too close on the defense. He picks up his second foul. That's five team fouls now on the well, Panthers. The Panthers in an attempt to foul here now. Have fouled twice and made one steal on the inbounds pass and scored two baskets on the deal. So they've got a shot. Moley's going to have to show a lot of composure, but they've got the senior leadership to do that out there if they'll just do it. Hunter reaches on Springer. Yep. Another good foul. Picks up his third foul. Now that'll next foul put the Maroons in the bonus. 118. Joe Manning comes in the ball game and Kettner's going to sit down. Coach Olson says we want to foul Hanneman as soon as he touches it. He's Travis not going to touch Wilson, it. Not going to touch him. Travis Wilson builds that lead 77 66, 111 to go, fourth quarter. Big hole. D. Hunter, nice drive. He puts it up and through. And UT going to take a quick timeout. Well, well, we've got 20 seconds here. Let's once again thank our fine sponsors tonight Don Jacobs, Mark and Sue Hicks, the owners over there at Mailboxes and Parcel Depot, located in Sydney Line Plaza, Moline, for all your business needs. And of course, if we put a plug in for ourselves here, Family Ties Productions. If you want to help us put these games on the air, give Jess a call at 755 7607. He'll give you all the details. No, we're starting to make plans to finish out our basketball season, try to do some stuff, I'm sure, in the springtime, but the big push is for next fall for football season. So if, you, if you've got some interest in that, why, please let us know. We, we've been on a very limited schedule this year. We'd like to get back to full, full schedule next year. Marcus Morrow, Morrow a coast to coast layup, 79-68. Hunter on the drive, pulls up, jumper from the baseline, won't go. Wilson, big rebound, off somebody, off Hunter, gonna go the Maroons away. 40, 
crowd six didn't, seconds. Yeah, Panther crowd didn't like that. Well, it looks like Moline's weathered the storm, Coach, but yeah. a great, a great comeback effort by the Panthers. Moline didn't do as good a job protecting that lead as they would have liked. Morrow with the with the layup. Here comes Alonso. Morrow trying to pick his pocket. <laughs> I don't think he's going to catch him, Coach. Alonso, two. Oh, Warden almost with a steal. Manning says, I'm not taking it anywhere. Marcus Morrow on an easy basket. Panthers can't catch up the foul. 11 point lead, 17 seconds. Moline's going to advance. Jonathan Borden answers. Uh, Quick foul with five seconds and a nine point lead by the Panthers. Well, Coach, I'll tell you what, this has been an exciting basketball game. Well, the Panthers, have, you you mentioned it earlier, he's going to, they're going to make it exciting. They're going to play hard to the end. That's they right. never throw in the towel. Coach Olsen, it's just the way he coaches his kids, and the That's kids right. believe in it. That's exactly right. Well, a great run. Panthers, like you mentioned earlier, 16 to 9 for the season. They'll finish the year at 16 and 10. Moline moves on to 25 and 2 and will face that the, the only team that has given him the losses this year, the Galesburg Silver Streaks Friday night. Some subs coming in for Moline. John Solis, the senior, 6'4", coming in. Number 35, 34, Derek Hendricks, a 6'1", junior, coming in the lineup. Both coaches unloading the bench now. Aaron and, uh, Wilson's in the ball game for Moline, number 24, a junior. Give, giving the fans a chance to... Uh, so the, the players have been out there all night. Right. We got Brian DeMond in for the Panthers. He's 44. Jason Porter, number 42. Corey Mears, 25, is in the ball game. Ian Scott, number 10, checks in. So in for Moline is number 42. Ryan Scannell in the ball game as uh, Travis Wilson makes a free throw. It's been a great basketball game. Well, hard fought, 10 point lead, five seconds to go for Moline. Sub ready to come in. Wilson makes it in the ball game for Moline. Zach Miner, sophomore, comes in the ball game. Travis Wilson sits down. Well, five seconds to go. It's a 11 point game. The fans appreciate what the effort ball these boys have put out tonight. Alex Sandoval coast to coast. Well, that's where it's going to end. 83-72, Maroons prevail, but not without a little consternation towards the end, Coach. Well, I'll tell you, kind of a, ga a game of run Moline in that second quarter looked as good as the high school basketball team as I think I've seen in a long, long time. The Panthers stayed with the pressure in that fourth quarter and came back to where they were down by nine a couple times. Just couldn't quite ever get over the hump. Every time they got to nine, Moline put it back to 11. 21 points for Josh Evans in a losing effort. Like you said, a career game. What did he bring in? A six-point average. Yep, uh, six-point average for the year. Uh, D. Hunter with uh, two, four, six, eight points in the se all in the second half. Tyson Wharton leads the Panther way again here. Let's see what he had. Uh, 16, 18, 20, 22 for Wharton. Six for Borden. Five for Alonzo. Alonzo, excuse me, Coach Hunter. And seven for Alex Sandoval and two points for Curtis Brewster. For the Maroons, in a fine effort, fine, fine balance scoring. Some of the players coming off the bench uh, in starting roles, right. filling in. Uh, good job by Coach Decker shuffling his lineup around. Uh, led the way by the big two, as you would expect. Travis Wilson with 24. Ian Hannum had a huge third quarter where he scored 11 or nine of his 20 points. Uh, after scoring nine in the first half. Uh, Kenny Spranger, solid performer for the Maroons, 11 points. Marcus Morrow didn't get the start tonight, but in three quarters scores 12 points. Joe Kettner in a surprise start, maybe not a surprise start, but very solid four game with nine. Right. Uh, Ryan Dexter, one three-pointer for three. And Joe Manning rounds us, the Maroons scoring out with four points. So... So it looks like the big matchup on Friday. Now, this game is going to be on Thursday night, folks. So uh, if I have my information correct, so the we'll, uh, Family Ties production will show this on TCI Channel 38. This will be on uh, the following night. This is Wednesday, so we urge you, if you're watching this now, tune in, uh, check your listings, because we'll bring you uh, the Moline-Galesburg rematch, and uh, this place will be rocking Friday night, Coach Sanders. No question about it. Third, third go-round, two pretty balanced teams. If the Moline team that was here tonight in that second quarter shows up and can play for four quarters, 
Galesburg is going to have their hands full. If they don't, then uh, Galesburg will probably win for the third time. So I'll tell you what, it was a great game. Uh, you look at keys in the ball game, and uh, I like to pick out players that I thought Kettner, as you mentioned, yep. really gave them. We talked about those unsung heroes, and I think, of course, he's not an unsung hero, but I think Ian Hanovan, the way he dominated the boards throughout the ball game, controlled the tempo, made key shots. Uh, he did an excellent job. And, and Josh Evans for the Panthers, I thought he just did a tremendous job and they had a great ball game. And I thought down when the Panthers made a good run, D. Hunter played very, very well also. Yeah, a strong fourth quarter. Well, we'll see you next time here. It'll be the Maroons against the streaks of Galesburg right back here at the Panther Den. Like I, like I said earlier, check your, uh, check your TV listings. It's a Friday night ball game, so it will be on Monday or Tuesday night. We'll, uh, we'll uh, have to have you check your own uh, TV schedule. And the Maroons have something to prove. So for Jim Sanders, Tim Sanders on stats and Jess Medina on the camera, this is Jim Smith saying so long, everybody, for a Family Ties production here on TCI Channel 38. We'll see you next time. Very strong starting out in a regular duel with um, Todd Thompson, nicknamed Tolly. Um, 103-pounder had a phenomenal senior year for the for the Maroons. Captured capped it off with a sixth-place finish at the IHSA state championships, individual state championships. And he's wrestling a kid by the name of Pat Harris, a junior from Glenmore North, 28-17. So not a bad record at 103, but Thompson definitely the big favorite. And I know Moline coach is looking for big points here. Thompson, a senior, and uh, Harris, Pat Harris from Glen Burn North, a junior. Again, he brings in a 28 and 17 record. Thompson, 42 and 5. And again, you're watching the Illinois State dual team championship on Family Ties Productions, TCI Channel 38. And Thompson out quickly with a takedown. Yeah, he scored a takedown nine seconds of the match, which is very good. It's gonna, gonna turn him loose. There it is, two to one now. Thompson says, I'm gonna work on my feet. And he, he's, he's gonna work the same philosophy that Dana Holland and Frank DeFilippis did. They wanna get that lead, establish a big lead, put him out of any type of danger, and then work for the fall. definitely looks like the aggressor in this match. Yeah, Thompson wrestles his best when um, he's definitely when he's very offensive. Going after that ankle pick, going after that low single, that's where he scores the most of his points. You know, he looks like he's the stronger wrestler here. Yeah, Todd, Todd's cut a lot of weight to get down to 103. He's a big 103 pounder. There's another takedown and escape. So he leads four to two. This match is going like it's expected to go. Todd's going to snap that head on. Watch out for a headlock, too. Todd does a lot of wrestling in the summer in Greco-Roman. Very good thrower. There's a little offense out of Pat Harris now. He drops in on Thompson's leg, but Thompson hips him out of bounds. They'll go back to the center. Start over, neutral. Four to two. Todd Thompson leads here at 103. Harris again in on a single. And again, you can see Thompson's strength there. Yeah, well, Thompson, you know, you know, you don't think of a 103 pounder being strong, but it's all relative. Yeah, it, um, being a lightweight in high school, I always thought they were strong. Well, Maybe I knew, I knew one that was strong. pretty darn strong. There, Thompson. There's that ankle pick you were talking about. Nice heel pick. Another takedown with 30 seconds to go in the first period. Now Thompson's he's going to probably try to ride him out. 25 seconds to go. He's ahead 6-2. to two. He'll be very content going into that second period with a nice 6-2 lead. And Thompson's a very good rider. Very good with the legs. And they're out. 10 seconds. First period. Tom Thompson, Moline in control. 6-2 to two over Pat Harris. The junior from Glenbard North. 
Caution Thompson. Thompson, come on, just a little. On other scores real quick. Um, a little after strong there. Pounds, New Atlantic Providence is beating Maine West 32 to 12. Rockford East um, is bar barely beating Chicago Lane 29-24 after 112. And Mount Carmel is handle handling Granite City 34 to 9 after 103. And that's first period ends here. Todd Thompson leading 6 to 2. Harris says, I defer Thompson will choose the bottom position to begin the second period. Again, Moline leads 21 to 11 in the team score. Thompson to his feet. Harris takes him back to the mat. Thompson back to his feet. Comes out. Could have it at the edge of the mat. Harris hanging on. They're out of bounds. Thompson picks up one. Loss of control. So Thompson leading 7-2 now, and he's not going to sit back like a lot of wrestlers would. He wants to build on that lead. He wants to keep working it. <laughs> now while Thompson's tying his shoes again, we want to thank our, our sponsors today, the Argus Dispatch. Sam's Highland Park Bowl, your home for Moon Night Madness on Friday and Saturday nights. Mailboxes and Parcel Depot, City Line Plaza Moline, the Total Fitness Center, owner Bob Horn and 42nd Avenue East Moline. Total Fitness will set up a personalized training program to fit your needs. And State Senator Denny Jacobs. We thank all our sponsors. Without them, we wouldn't be bringing this to you today. So if you folks are out and about, Make sure to express your thanks. Stop in, give these fine people some business. Yeah, like I said, I mean, the high school kids, they, they love this. They really do. Getting a chance to see themselves on TV. It's very special for them. Todd Thompson, in the meantime, has gotten another takedown to increase his lead to 9-2, and two, and then just cut the kid. So he's leading 9-3 now with a minute left in the second period. Thompson here in this 103 pound match, but which is the way probably expected to go. Yeah, like I'm sure Coach Rosenthal is looking for uh, being such a dominant wrestler. We're looking for extra team points out of out of Thompson. Yeah, I mean he's um, expecting at the least a major, and he really wants a tech fall or a fall here. I think for his wrestler. Well, he's in on the leg, secures another takedown. That makes it 11 to three. So he's got his major right now with no more points being scored, but I'm sure there'll be one or two more scored. There's some back points for Tally. And, and as I speak, he rolls him over and kind of turks him to his back. He's gonna, lead's gonna be 14 to three now. Thompson scores a three point near fall with that nice move. And that's the way we're gonna end the second period with Todd Thompson and Moline winning 14 to three. 11 point difference. Again, 15 point difference between the opponents is a technical fall, scoring five team points for, for your team. As it stands right now, Thompson will earn uh, 14 points. He's gonna go the optional start and cut him loose. So, Pat Harris picks up his fourth escape, compliments of Mr. Todd Thompson. Thompson's kind of acting like he's got a bad leg here. Yeah, he does. He has a torn meniscus in his knee and it tends to lock up at times. Well, he was hopping on that one foot He's hurting, he's hurting, he's fighting him off. I think, he, I think that was happening before that shot. Yeah, it was. The ref um, you can see should it have been on able to see him hobbling there and should have, been, should have called a timeout, but. So we'll stop it. And in the meantime, the Glenbar North wrestler scores the takedown to make it 14 to six. and taking that injury time out. Um, Ma'am, did you know mailboxes and parcel depot can ship anything anywhere via ground or air overnight delivery? No, I did not. Packages and shipping supplies are on hand and their knowledgeable staff will custom pack anything you wish. This is one company that truly understands the importance of business support services. That's why they offer a wide variety of office supplies, including photocopies, business cards, stationery, rubber stamps, greeting cards, keys, and photo IDs. 
services such as word processing, facsimile, postal services, and open account billing for businesses also can play a key role in their success. So if you folks get out, you got any business needs, go see your friends at mailboxes and Parcel Depot. Ty Thompson working a fall here. He's got it tight. This would be a big fall. Oh, and Glenbar North guy does a nice job of fighting off his back. But the lead goes to 19 and 6 for Tally Thompson. Looking for that technical fall now. Is it? Knocked the ref over in the is meantime. It, is it on the ref? Do you get any points for that? That just shows you those lightweight kids are tough. That's right. And they're quick, too. Yeah. Quicker than that ref. 19 to 6 right now. Tally Thompson's up by 13 with a minute 14 to go. He's going to turn him loose. He wants to work for that technical fall now. There he goes. 19 to 7. We got it over a minute. Oh, Harris back in on the leg. He said, I'm not giving up. That's something Todd's got to work for. He, he, he's so offensive. He pushes so hard. So a quick shot across. He's going to get cautioned, though. That's too quick. That's his second caution. You might tell the folks about what that caution's all about, Coach. Yeah, um, you got to wait for the ref to blow the whistle. you got to be on your line, whether it's red or green, and you can't make any movement towards the other guy until the ref blows the whistle. And what happened right there is Todd Thompson made the move forward before the whistle blew. Harris in on the leg. Thompson trying to counter. He steps over the top. He's got the takedown. And the ref's counting back points. He's, He's got, got two near falls, so the match is going to be over now as soon as this kid gets to his base. Todd Thompson, if he doesn't pin this kid, is going to win by a decision of 23-7, to 7, a technical fall, which is five team points for the There Bruins. it is. Which is going to bring Maroons, Moline's dual meet score to 26-11 to 11 in favor of Moline. Well, big point scored there by Todd Thompson. He did his job. Yeah. Earned five team points there. Technical fall at, at five minutes and 29 seconds of this 103-pound match. So, Moline in the driver's seat. They got to keep the momentum going. Who do we have coming up now? Bam at we 112. We got Ben Hot from Moline against Jason Jones, a junior 24 and 20 from Glenbard North. Ben Hot had a Excellent senior year, going 37 and 10 on the year. Um, at one time, was ranked third in the state after a first place finish at the prestigious Geneseo Invitational. Missed about two or three weeks because of an injury to the groin, and came back strong, qualifying for state. But you know, those two or three weeks off can definitely hurt you that part of the season. Right. But he's back. He's wrestling stronger than ever right now, and I expect um, a big win for Ben Hot here. Well, here we go again. Hot's up against Jason Jones. He's a junior with a 24 and 20 record. Hot in quickly on a double leg and Hot secures a, a quick takedown. Yeah, Hot a big 12 pounder. He's very, very strong. One of the strongest 12 pounders probably in the state, and he definitely uses that to his advantage. Well, having uh, seen him wrestle a couple times for several times over the last few years, uh, he is definitely strength is in his corner whenever he's wrestling. Going out there a little, a little wired right now. Yeah, he's, he he takes it. He goes after his opponent's hard. No, and he's going. He takes Jones right to his back. It's kind of a kind of a semi fireman's carry. No, he's got him in trouble here. We got a long time to go. One minute, and there's the fall. 43 seconds into the match. And that puts Moline up 32 to 11, which means Moline is going to be in the state semifinals. So that puts them over the top. With only three weights remaining. Three weights remaining. The most points that uh, Glenn Bard North can score is Four 18. Weights. Four weights remaining, 24 Whoops. points. We spoke too soon. Yes, we did. Never mind, folks. Erase that. We'll try to get that deleted before we air it. Yeah. Hear that, Jess? Okay. That moves Moline one step closer to securing a spot in the semifinals, which again, you win this round, folks, and you're assured of a medal. Yeah, one match. Um, what Moline needs to do is they need to win one match of the remaining four to be in the state semifinals. Well, who we got coming up here for Moline? Looks like Andy Cuffler. Yeah, we're going to go with Andy Cuffler from Molina Jr., 9-19. and 19. But let me tell you, that record is deceiving. 
He's a tough wrestler for a 9-19 record. He stays in very good position, and he's just taking his, you know, he's taking his losses this year, but he's very respected as a wrestler. And he's going up against the uh, junior wrestler with a 40-9 and nine record, Nick Sirincioni. Yeah, ben Nick, Nick's North. a very good wrestler. Um, matter of fact, in the state quarterfinals, he lost to Kelly Madden, the eventual state runner-up, 4-3 in a tightly contested match. So he's... So I'm sure Glenbar North, like Moline did the last two weights, I'm sure they're expecting some big points here. Thinking extra points, yeah. Right, but Coupler's, Coupler's a tough kid. Sirincioni in first, scores the takedown. So he takes an early lead, two to zero. I, th I think those last two wins from Moline, um, at least stop the sweat a little bit from Rosenthal, knowing he's got them. Um, All Stater Joel Couture left in his lineup, along with two other solid kids. He's probably right. feeling very comfortable right now, but you never feel comfortable until you know well, you've got Well, not until the up. points are on the board and uh, kids you've are shaking got hands it. after the duel. Another takedown there, Sirincioni, little block off spin. So he leads Andy Kuffler, four to one. Going here, just over a minute remaining in the first period, and he turns him loose. Cuffler scores the escape, four to two now. And they're off the mat, and they'll go back and start over. Check some other scores real quick. After 119 pounds, Mount Carmel is blowing out Granite City 40 to nine. I think they have theirs wrapped up. And that's who uh, Molina will go into is Mount Carmel, currently the number one ranked team in the state, and obviously showing reason why they are number one ranked team in the state, having a very nice quarterfinal match. On the other side of the bracket, after 119, Providence, New Lenox, Providence is leading Main West 35 to 15, and Rockford East is leading Chicago Lane 34 to 24. Must have scored some falls in those other matches because all the other matches are a, are a weight class ahead of where we are. We're at the 119 pound bout. Andy Kuffer Moline against Nick Sirincioni, Glen Bard North Panthers. Sirincioni leads four to two. First period winds down, 10 seconds now. And if, if Andy can hold him off here and go into the second period down four to that, he won that period, even though the score doesn't show it. He's done everything he's had to do to be in this match. And when you're not when you're not favored as a wrestler, that's what you basically want to do is you want to be able to go into that third period with this shot. You know, you have a chance of winning the match, and that's where he's putting himself in that position right now. Moline defers. No, he doesn't. He takes down. So Andy Cuffer will start the second period down, trailing four to two. Tries to come up. Sierra Sione sticking with him. Cuffer turns out, gets his one. Four to three. And we'll work for a takedown. Shot by Sirincioni. Coming up. Kuffler trying to counter. Sirincioni turns into the legs, secures the takedown. Good job of not panicking down in there. And he's ahead, six to three now. A minute 15 remaining in this second period. And they're off the mat. So with one minute and four seconds remaining in this second period, Nick Sirincioni, Glenn Bard North, leads Andy Kuffler Molding, six to three. Kuffler to his feet now, secures the escape, six to four. Sirincioni with the lead, hooking on a takedown, does a little neck wrench, step over, he's got Kuffler in trouble. Kuffler close to that edge, needs to try to somehow work towards that edge. Got a lot of time left here, 40 seconds. Referee down, giving it a close look. Twenty-five seconds. Kuffler turning back and forth. And Kuffler, Sirincioni trying to secure him. Kuffler, very good fighter. Nine and nineteen record this year. He has not been pinned one time this year out of the nineteen losses. 
You know, it shows a lot of heart. It shows a lot of heart. Easy to give up in that situation when you're on your back near the crowd going nuts. I was going to say, that was, uh, he, he was on his back. He had a long time to go, and he didn't panic and uh, kept himself alive and got back to his to his base. And those are the type of kids you want in your program. Those kids that you know are going to give it your all for your teammates. Helper up, trying to work one more escape before the end of the period. He trails now 11 to 4. Giving up a five-point move there. And the period will end that way. So Andy Culper does a good job of getting off his back. And he'll start on top as uh, Nick Sirincioni chooses the down position. Andy Culper down 11-4, still doing a nice job of wrestling this Sirincioni. Getting a little high now. Sierra Sione trying to come out for a reversal or an escape. And there's the reversal. You know what, I don't want to say anything, Bam, but that's the first reversal we've had this entire match. Now yeah, wrestling's kind of um, gotten to an escape takedown. Um, and there's an philosophy. escape. Nander off the mat. Kids about ready to reverse you. Instead of fighting it off, fighting off, just let them go. Let them go. go. Give them one feet. instead of two. Now we're back on our feet working for a takedown. Couple in on a leg. Sharon Sione trying to fight him off. And well, Stale made it and start over. Yeah, 13 to 5 here, a minute four remaining. Kupfer doing some offensive things there. And, and it sounds, you know, different or different, difficult to say, but 13-5, uh, and Kupfer's wrestling a good match here. Sirisione is one of, the, one of the top kids in the state at 119, one of the top seven, eight kids in the state. And Kupfer's wrestling him to, you know, only a major decision right now. I was going to say, Sirincione is looking to score big points. Kupfer in on leg here. Yep, Kupfer can get a takedown here. That's going to take that major decision away. Which got his head pinned between his legs. Now, what do you do from there, Coach? Well, you Just keep working um, forward? Yeah, you want to keep circling to the side, and you want to elevate his the leg that is up. You want to push that away, giving your head some space, move around. You can pop so, it out. And so work you want to try side. to clear your head out first before you do anything else? Yeah, once you get down you have to. You can't hip. move otherwise. Couple you know, hanging onto that leg, staying down in there after it. sirincione has got his hips back out. And it doesn't look like Moyne's going to get that takedown to erase the major, but Glenbar North is only going to score a major here, which is which will end up being an advantage for Moyne in the long run. So a very nice, and there you have hard it. fought. Good lost job by Andy Kuffler. Uh, wrestling like as you said. Coach Pastelnik, wrestling one of the top kids in the state. Giving up a major decision, but uh, Coach Rosenthal's got to be pleased with that. Yeah, very pleased with them, only, you know, being an underclassman. And right now it puts it in the perspective that Glenbar North has to score falls at the next three weights to beat Moline by a point. And that's obviously the position you want to be in going into your last three matches. Right now we're going to have... Um, Brant Kruger from Moline, and he is going to be wrestling Alex LaPointe, a junior with a 12 and 18 record here. So this is definitely one that I think the Moline coaches think they can get. Kruger coming in at 20 and 16. Yeah, LaPointe beat um, Kruger earlier this year at the Glenbard East Invitational by a score of three to one, and that was one of Kruger's first varsity matches of the season. So a, a very um. So Kruger's come a long way since yes, then. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. So um, well, here we go. This is a big match. So, so I think Brant can win this match. Moline win will put it earlier. out of reach. Glenn Bard North uh, forced to work major points here. This is the only two matches remain after this one. And even just a loss here um, puts Moline into the state semifinals, and I'm sure Moline's coach Todd Rosenthal knows that. And he's going to tell Brant, you know, Russell right. to win, but at the same Russell, time, Russell's smart. But don't, yeah, don't take any chances or don't expose your back unnecessarily. But go ahead and wrestle. Yeah. Now you're wrestling for the team. Last week and the two weeks before right. the state individual championships, now you're wrestling for the team. And that's why they, you know, brought the state dual championship into effect. Cougar, a little arm drag. Countered there. Alex LaPointe, Glenbard North wrestler. 
Trying a little duck under, didn't go. Cougar been a little more of the aggressor here so far on their feet. Nothing's, nothing's come to completion yet, but uh, he's working. Yeah, 40 seconds left in the first period at 109 or 125. You usually see scoring by now, but both guys are wrestling, filling each other out a little bit. Right. Waiting for that opening. Kruger with a shot attempt there. Well, and you can tell by their records that neither one of these guys is a real dominating wrestler, so, they, so they're, they're not going to probably just go out and take control of a match like some wrestlers can. And they're both right now put into a, you know, a tough situation. They, the Glenbar North wrestler knows he needs to win and knows he needs to win big. And the Moyne wrestler knows if he gets a win, the match is over. <laughs> Ten seconds here, first period. Well, it's going to end. It's going to end scoreless here. No score at the end of one. Brant Kruger, Moline locked up in a scoreless duel here with Alex LaPointe, Glenn Bart North. LaPointe's going to pick the bottom position. Kruger says, I'm going to go optional start, which indicates a, an escape forthcoming, and there it is. So one to nothing, LaPointe on the gift from Kruger. Well, we're gonna see if we pick up the pace here a little on the feet in the second period. Yeah, they'll, they'll be feeling out process over now, coach. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna score some points this period. Um, and if not, the refs are gonna make sure some points are scored <laughs> by some stalling. We're gonna make them wrestle one way or the other. Minute and a half, second period. Like I said, like I said 119, there's not much offense here for 125-pound match. And I think the refs are going to make sure they pick that up here within the next 10, 15 seconds. Well, still pretty conservative here in the second period. <clears throat> One to nothing, Alex LaPointe. There's a stalling call against Moline wrestler. Not that he's doing anything less than the Glenbar North wrestler, it's just that he's backing but up. But he's moving backwards, yeah. And I would expect if um, Glenbar North wrestler will score here in the next 35, 40 seconds, he'll get called also. Well, he's, LaPointe's taking the match to Kruger right now. Yeah, he so. is. And the referee's got eyes. They know who's winning. They know who's winning this the team thing. and. Uh, yeah, they know what both wrestlers need to do for their team. Right. Kruger working that Russian tie, not doing anything off it. And shot by LaPointe. I might Kruger. have to eat my words there. If uh, Kruger don't get going, he's going to get called for stalling again, I think. There's yeah, a shot. There's a little shot there. Yeah, he tried a, little, a few little duck unders there early and uh, didn't get anything off of them, so. Hadn't done anything yet this period. 10 second, second period. Edge of the mat. Kruger snaps the head. There's another stalling call against Warning Moline. Warning on Kruger. That's going to that's gonna give LaPointe an extra point now. So Alex LaPointe will take a 2-0 to zero lead and going into the second, third period. Kruger a little upset, you know, saying that I shot. I shouldn't have got called. But I think that was a good call. I mean, he hasn't done... He's taking some half shots, but the refs know when you're actually going offensive and you're they're trying to score. They're shooting and they're shooting, right? Yeah, he's, he's trying to right now. He's not trying to score, and that's what wrestling's all about. So down 2-0 on the bottom position. Kruger needs to get out and start working. Well, escaping a takedown will win it for him, but right now Alex point doing a good job on top. Yep, Brad Kruger keeping his head on the mat. You can't escape with that head on the mat. He needs to get it up there. Glenbar North working a cradle there. Well, they're good. they know they need a fall. He's got they it locked up now. It's just a matter of adjusting his body. He's in some danger, though. He's, Kruger's got that leg, and the point's pretty high there. Kruger should be in pretty good position here. He needs to start working up to the Glenbar North kid's head. He needs to bring that say, left Kruger working out. to come out of that cradle situation. 
No, he lost the leg now. So the advantage goes back to Glen Bard North. One minute left, third period. Frank Kruger, Moline. Trails two to zero, he's giving up more points. Yeah, he definitely does not want to give up a fall here. Um, and I'm sure that's something Coach Todd Rosenthal is going to address to him after this match. You, know, you, can't, you can't afford to sit on bottom and you know take no. a two-0 loss. You've got to get out and get on top. Well, he's, the ref's not giving it a real good look, so evidently he's got one shoulder well off the mat. But right. he's earned his three back points here. He's LaPointe trying to adjust the cradle. Kruger getting ready to kick over there now. Now he, right there, he needs to work that hand control. Look where his head, his head's got to come off that mat. It's looking straight at the mat, and that's not where you want it. He's going to get hit again there. 15 seconds now, 15 seconds. He's going to get hit again here and go to a major decision. Very crucial he doesn't give this up. Yeah, because then two falls ties it. And there it is. So Brent Kruger loses. Loses, but Moline now. But Moline now only losing it. Into the semifinals. But I'm sure Todd, Coach Todd Rosenthal is not too happy about that match. I'm sure he'll have a couple words for Kruger, some words of encouragement going into that semifinal match. That, that gives Moline a 32 to 18 lead with two matches remaining and the most points that Glenn Bard North can score now is 12, barring any team penalty deductions. So here we go at 130 pounds. 130 pounds. Um, what we're going to have right now is uh, Joel Couture against Gino Rigatano. Uh, Gino Rigatano and Joel Couture met first round down in the state last week, in which it was a good contested match. Couture coming out the victor 14 to 6. So um, Couture is definitely the favorite, but Rigatano is a tough character. So this is not a, this is not a given here for Moline. And um, I think what um, Glenbard North had um, planned going into this match is that they were going to move Gino Rigatano up to 35 and wrestle Keith Murray against Joel Couture and give Joel Couture the match. But they need both wins. They need two falls here. They need here. a win at 30 and they need a win at 35. Rigatano. Couture doing an excellent in job. For, in on single. quick. Couture counters. Hey, we got some good wrestling going on here, folks. No points yet. Yeah, they picked it up a little from the 25-pound match. Boy, no kidding. And they're out of bounds. And this is that's the same type of match it was at the state tournament. They went at it pretty hard like no that points. for the full six minutes. Couture, a junior, 43-5, and five, third place finisher a week ago in the state individual tournament. Yeah, Joe Couture had an excellent tournament down at Assembly Hall in Champaign, Illinois. Lost a tough, hard-fought 6-5 decision in the semis to Joe Heron of Joliet Catholic, but then battled back strong for a third-place finish. But Gino Rigatano don't care. Yeah. He does not that care. That was last week. What have you done That's lately, right. huh? That's right. One minute and four seconds here. First period, no score, but we've seen quite a bit of wrestling so far. Rigatano knows he has nothing to lose. He's going to go after him. He's going to try to upset this kid. Nice well, Rigatano really kind of wrestling for himself now with the team score secured. Well, that's a move I haven't seen since Ray Rogers was on TV. Joe Couture being the defensive wrestler here, he needs to pick it up a little bit, start working that offense. Hmm. Drops in on a shot, out of bounds, 46 seconds, first period. Again, no score here in a 130 pound match. Joel Rigatano. Two of those being right here. Joel Couture, excuse me, Dan Rigatano. Gino Rigatano against uh, Joel. Gino. Gino, or Joel likes being underneath right here. He feels very comfortable underneath. Likes to take that double leg shot, that offensive shot underneath and stay there. Looking over on the far mat there, I see the Allman Pioneers warming up for their quarterfinal match at the state individual tournament. And here. we'll be, folks, you check your TV listings. We'll be bringing you that quarterfinal match as well. And the first period ends 0-0.
Gino Rigatano and Joel Couture deadlocked. Joel Couture picking down the second period. Couture is going to start on the bottom position, comes up to his feet, and gets the escape. One and nothing now, lead for Joel Couture. Coaching against Joel Couture, he's one of those wrestlers you hate to face. Um, dangerous in every situation. He's very got a very unorthodox style of wrestling and can score big points with throws at any given time. Never feel too comfortable coaching against him. Rigatano now drops down single leg. Couture trying to counter. Ah, they're going to be out of bounds. Let's go back start over, the referee says. Still anybody's match here. Rigatano drops down. Couture counters. There's that throw you were talking about. Rigatano comes in for a, charges in, and yeah, Couture just tight. headlocks him. That's very tight there. Um, a lot of time in a 10 left. Joel needs just to relax, take your time, and he's going to earn the fall here. We've got over a minute, just over a minute remaining in the second period here. Coach Rosenthal says, just relax. Stay right there. Don't, don't over adjust. Now the referee going to step in and call potentially dangerous here. You've, I've seen that many times in this situation with the headlock. Yeah, I have also. Um, this time in the state tournament, though, I don't think we'll see it. But it's possible. Depends if he sees that wind getting cut off to the throat. 38 seconds. Joe needs to look up. Arch back there. There you go. Well, we can see it from here, folks. You can probably see it at home. There's it's daylight between Rigatano's shoulders and the mat. Well, a nice little counter move. It gets Couture moving. But it increases the lead to 6-1, to one, and they will start on their feet in favor of Joel Couture. <laughs> 20 seconds here in the second period. Five-point move, throw, headlock by Joel Couture. Takes yeah, charge are, of this match, six to one. Matt's Rockford East will wrestle New Lenox Providence in the state semifinals this afternoon. As and Mount Carmel will wrestle what seems to be the Moline Maroons in the semifinals also this afternoon. But it's not over yet. Not over yet. Third period. Joel Couture takes a six to one lead. He'll be on top. Gino Rigatano from north on the bottom. Tour trip takes him back to the mat. Kind of get the feeling Couture's taking charge of this match here with that throw. Yeah, he's hard to score big points on, Joel Couture. Very flexible, has that unorthodox style, very hard to put on his back. There's that situation we were talking about earlier with the uh, Couture felt himself getting in a little trouble, said, I'll just let you go, give you the one. Take my chances on my feet. Six to two now. Couture with the lead. Minute 20. Remain in the match. Rigatano went on a leg, but Couture is controlling his head very well at the edge of the mat. He'll call a stalemate, and we'll go back to the center. minute. 6 to 2 now. Joel Couture still leading. Wrestling conservative right now. Wrestling pretty smart. Working for a takedown. Couture coming over the top there. Doesn't get it. Vigatano with a little shot. Couture blocks it off. 30 seconds. Chuck there. <laughs> Joe Couture working for that fall, leading eight to two. And now Joe Couture is going to be in content and just trying to ride him out or cutting him and giving him an escape here at the last nine seconds in the match. Looks like Joel Couture is going to be the victor, up 8-2 with nine seconds left in the third period. Oh, 
We're going to get a caution. Eureka Town will move a little early. Caution on top. In the last nine seconds of this match, Couture not going to let Rigatano go. We're out of bounds with three seconds to go. And now it just dropped down to that single legger, the outside ankle, and ride him out here. So there'll be one match remaining in today's first round quarterfinal match with Moline leading Glenbard North by a score of 35 to 18. The last match of the night will consist of Phil DeCaster of Moline, a sophomore with a 28 and 15 record, against Hardeep Bogle, a senior from Glenbar North with a 12 and 18 record. Hardeep Bogle, a foreign exchange student. Why don't I get any of those? Yeah, I need a foreign exchange student that has actually heard of wrestling. <laughs> Actually, wrestling big overseas in a lot of places, so yeah, especially you never know. European bloc countries, very, very big. As a matter of fact, Mo